We still have four more days to go. That was a story that was filed earlier on by our reporter Zawadi Mudibo, not to be confused with him uh, being at the 14th um, uh, Northern Corridor Summit that's happening right now. Now, the local beauty news and online searches have clearly shown that there is an outbreak of interest for hair extensions, wigs, or weaves in Kenya. There are over 17 million young women in Kenya who want to look great, with many entrepreneurs now cashing in um, on that very fact. Here to discuss more on how to start Start your own hair selling business, make some good money from the venture is Joe Kiunga uh, from Hair Innovate. He's the founder of the company. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me, Maya. I'm interested in knowing what got you interested in getting into hair business. I think as we all plan to maybe be entrepreneurial and get into some business, what really we focus on is maybe identify the gap first. When you see a market gap out there, then you get to realize that you can actually do something out of it. And uh, I myself, being a business innovation student, I looked out for an opportunity that not so many people were existing in it then. So I chose to kickstart my business and actually try to put more money in it, try to commit more time and be aggressive in it. And eventually, at least, I did something and created a of it. What market gap were you specifically looking to fill? Okay, uh, mostly in Kenya, we have like so many women who have demands for hair extensions, not uh, actually getting to understand that they are legit human hair extensions, they are counterfeit, and also they are those that really suit your customers. We are looking for something that can please them and actually impress them. So when we, I was actually looking f uh, for something to sell in the market, I was looking for something to improve the customer experience because there are so many other beauty or hair extensions companies out there. But what makes us maybe the hair innovate structure unique is because we focus on more of satisfying our customer and having them the experience that they may not find it anywhere else and that's what really inspired and made up our business. According to a report, uh, women are spending about 20% of their income on uh, hair products. This is an increase from just 15% in 2016. Is this um, directly translating to your sales? Uh, I would like to say that uh, it is not directly translating, but it might be having some impact at the end of maybe our sales, our monthly sales. But uh, what is really happening in the market that there are so many other businesses coming up. When you see more women or maybe more customers in the market, what it means that there are more actually more businesses opening. And when they open means there is more competition, you have to upscale or maybe, maybe uh, improve or maybe keep up your game and always actually try to invest more and come up with new products to please the new customers. Because what I think is the more the customers that are coming in, the more the business is actually starting out there in human extension. So they are there. They are trying to fill in the gap which is new in the market. Who is your target market? This considering that there is a perception that hair extensions are very, uh, very expensive and are, you know, a heavy investment. Um, so who are you targeting and what needs are you looking to cater for? So whom we really target is just a normal Kenyan. Anyone out there can be a potential customer. You can be our, own, our, our, our customer in future. I never know. What we do is like uh, we make it as basic, as simple as possible, and we have everything for everyone. The, okay, it depends on the packages we have in our company. Because when you come to here Innovate, what we really focus on is like the packages we are having. We make sure that they are as affordable as possible. So that's why most of the customers and they're calling us, they always ask, is the allergy, is the, the hair you're selling legit? Is it like the real, real thing? What we do is like we have actually identified a gap in the market because most of the hair brands, the big brands you know out there, you know what they do? The prices are way too high and nobody can actually ma manage to afford that. So what we've done is uh, bridge the gap and ensure that each and every single Kenyan deep in the counties, deep down in the villages can actually make a call to us online through our maybe social media platforms and be able to make an order. And that's how simple it can be. I like that you've talked about um, deep down in the rural areas. So I'm curious to know, uh, are hair extensions also as popular in rural areas as they are in urban areas? No, there's quite a, a difference in terms of how uh, they are used here in town. Most of our sales are actually based in Nairobi. Most of our customers may be up in Kilimani, Kilelesha. Those are the places that we really supply. Deep in the villages, you might, we might find actually one customer in a month, two or three in a week. It's actually not so, the frequency is not so high, but uh, they are there. I have to appreciate that. And there are so many out there actually supporting us, and we really appreciate that. And what they do is like,
like we have specific products for back then. So if we really have to target the larger market, what we do is we have something maybe the range of an impulse buyer, which is estimated about 500 to maybe 5,000 shillings. So if someone can impulsely buy something from the rulers, that's what we really try to focus them at, maybe when you're targeting those markets down there. We're seeing more and more male professionals coming up in the industry, in an industry that's really considered to be, you know, a female sort of industry. Um, <coughs> what difference do you think that males bring into the industry and what do women like about them? I really think uh, whenever you see a man out there who's maybe venturing into the hair business, the first one thing they have to be very committed and aggressive and passionate. So those three things when they come together. You sound together, passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm very <laughs> passionate because some, it's something that I really started because I wanted to, to create an impact. So when you're out there, you're trying to, maybe you are a man, you want something to do, you're handling women. It's actually one of the most beautiful things when you make people look good. Like maybe somebody who does your hair, it's a guy. They feel very, very good, rather, when they make you look good. And that's the first motivation they get. Also, it's highly paying. I must appreciate the fact that when you do it, when you establish it, it takes time to pay, though. But when you are down in the business, then you get to actually enjoy the fruits of maybe having good customer. When you serve them well, they are good. And they really, really, really appreciate the fact that you are their customer. I have to say that. Thank you very much for that. It's been an interesting conversation there um, with Joe Kiyunga, who is the founder of Hair Innovate. Um, interesting perspective coming from a male who, who is in the hair business.